Mr. McCoy back with part 17 of Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library. You need to look up at the Wonder Dome, said Sierra. Huh? said Kyle. Sierra and her whole team were standing together outside the door to Community Meeting Room B. She hadn't been this happy or excited in a long time. Um, Sierra, said Akima, why exactly are you suggesting we all give ourselves a crick in the neck by staring at the ceiling? Okay, this is a game some of us play online called What's the Connection? I put up a list of authors, and you have to figure out how they're linked by the titles of their books. Whoa, said Akima, sort of sarcastically. Sounds like fun. It is, believe me, but it's not easy. What'd you figure out? asked Miguel. Well, like Curtis said, Thomas Wolfe wrote Look, Homeward Angel, and Lewis Carroll wrote Through the Looking Glass. That got me thinking, and running computer searches. Stephen Sondheim wrote a book called Look, I Made a Hat. Maya Angelou wrote Even the Stars Look Lonesome, and pseudonymous Bosch wrote This Isn't What It Looks Like. They all have Look in the title, said Kyle. What about the other five authors? asked Akima. Did they write look books too? No, they're up there for a different word. Huh? Booker T. Washington wrote Up from Slavery and Shel Silverstein wrote Falling Up. And Dr. Seuss, said Kyle. Great day for help. Great day for up. George Orwell did Coming Up for Air and Todd Strasser did a book called If I Grow Up. So the ten statues give us two words, said Miguel. Yep, look, and up. So I did. I looked up at the Wonder Dome. There, did you see it? That string of numbers that just drifted across the 200 screen under the Star of David? 220.5203, said Miguel. Akima knuckle-punched Kyle in the arm. This is just like that bonus code thingy you showed me on the school bus. Of course, said Kyle. This is a limoncello game. He always hides secret codes in strange places. Way to go, Sierra. Thanks, said Sierra, realizing how much more fun it was to play this kind of a game with real friends instead of virtual ones on the internet. But we already found the same 200s number playing Bibliomania, said Miguel. True, said Kyle. Check out the sections for numbers the cards wouldn't give us. Everybody craned their necks and focused on the graphics swimming across the ten panels overhead. Here comes another one, said Sierra, in the 600s, right underneath the floating stethoscope. Got it, said Kyle. 624.193. Woohoo, said Akima. Sierra, you're my new hero, said Kyle. You saved the day, Sierra blushed. Thanks. The spinner, said Akima. Huh, said Miguel. That was another clue. The Bibliomania game was pointing us to the ceiling, too. Because in Dewey Decimal Mode, the Wonder Dome looks like a giant 3D version of the game board's the board game spinner. Awesome, Sierra, said Miguel. Absolutely awesome. Sierra and her teammates stared up at the ceiling for over an hour. At 12.30, they finally lay down on the floor so they wouldn't cramp their neck muscles. Because every 15 minutes, the animated ceiling looped through call numbers for every Dewey Decimal Room in the library. Except one. And then, the sequence repeated itself. How come there's no 300s number, said Miguel? Probably because that's the one book we really, really, really need, said Kyle. That limoncello, said Akima. What a comedian. It's time to share what you think about this turn of events. Turn to the person closest to you and share your opinion. Peering over the railing on the third floor balcony at close to 2 a.m., Andrew Peckelman saw Sierra Russell sitting all alone in the Rotunda reading room. Andrew had spent the night on the third floor losing video games to Charles. 
and being reminded about how much he needed to break into community room meeting room B to borrow any clues Kyle Keeley's team had gathered to pay Charles back for wasting so much of the team's time on the Anne of Green Gables clue due to his foolish fear of heights. Andrew had promised Charles he'd do whatever it took. If anyone on Team Keeley is going to help us break into their headquarters, Charles had said, it will be the shy girl who is constantly reading. Have you noticed what Sierra Russell uses for a bookmark? No, Andrew had honestly answered. Her library card, which of course doubles as a key card for meeting room B. Find a way to borrow it. Isn't that illegal? Of course not. This is a library. People borrow books, don't they? Well, yeah. Did I mention that I have 3,000 Facebook friends, 2,000 Twitter followers? Each and every one of them will hear what a weenie and wimp you are if you don't do this thing to guarantee that our team wins. So Andrew made his way down to the first floor. Sierra, as usual, was reading a book. As he moved closer, Andrew saw a flash of white. Charles was right. Sierra was using her shiny white library card to mark her place in the book's pages. He made his way to the cluster of overstuffed reading chairs. Good book? His voice startled him. Oh, hello, yes. Mind if I join you? He slid into a crinkly leather seat opposite Sierra. So, uh, um, what are you reading? Charles and the Great Glass Elevator by Roald Dahl. Oh yeah, I've heard about that book. Where's the rest of your team? They went to bed, want to get up bright and early, before the doors on the second floor open again. Yeah, Haley and Charles conked out too. Guess it's just us bookworms, huh? Well, it is kind of late, said Sierra. I'm going to go upstairs and... May I take a look? Hmm? At your book. I've never actually read it. I just tell people I have. Oh, sure. Sierra handed it to him. Thank you. Andrew flipped through the pages until he found the spot where Sierra had tucked her library card. Wouldn't it be cool if this library had a flying elevator like in the Willy Wonka movie? Especially if you could use it to crash through the roof like Charlie and Wonka did. That'd be a pretty cool way to escape from the library. Huh? Yeah, I guess. That was when Andrew made the switch. He slipped his library card into Sierra's book and palmed hers. Charles would be so proud of him. So, he said, closing the book, did you ever read The Elevator Family? No, I don't think so. It's all about this family that lives in the elevator of a San Francisco hotel. And let's just say the book has its ups and its downs. Andrew laughed hysterically because it was one of the funniest jokes he knew. Sierra sort of chuckled. He handed back her book. Overhead, the Wonder Dome dissolved out of its dewy decimal mode and with a swirl of colors became a bright green bedroom with a pair of red framed windows looking out on a blue night sky with a full moon and a blanket of twinkling stars. In the great green room, there was a telephone and a red balloon and a picture of a cow jumping over the moon. The ceiling had become the bunny's bedroom from Goodnight Moon. A quiet old lady bunny in a frumpy blue dress hopped into the rotunda reading room. Two tiny cats followed her. Great, said Andrew, another stupid hologram. I think she's cute, said Sierra. Hush, said the bunny. Good night clocks and good night socks. Good night, Sierra. Good night, Bunny. Sierra took her book and headed upstairs. Good night, Andrew, said the Bunny. Right. He pocketed the purloined library card. He couldn't do anything with it right away, not while the holographic Bunny's handlers were watching on the spy cameras. But first thing in the morning. Good night, old Bunny, saying hush, he called out. And then, under his breath, he muttered, in the morning competition we're going to crush. Up bright and early the next morning, Kyle made his way across the rotunda reading room. It was 8.15. The Dewey Decimal doors would open in one hour 
and 45 minutes. The game would be over in less than four hours. Kyle was totally pumped. Sierra Russell, on the other hand, was sitting in a comfy chair reading a book. Hey, said Kyle. Hi, said Sierra, stifling a small yawn. Did you stay up all night reading? No, I went upstairs around two, but there was a new stack of books on the librarian's desk when I came down. Oh, really? What did you find? Five copies of this. She showed Kyle her book. It was The Eleventh Hour, A Curious Mystery. It's a rhyming picture book about Horace the Elephant's 11th birthday party and the search to find out who ran off with all the food. There are hidden messages and cryptic codes all over the pages. Why is it called the 11th hour? The birthday feast was supposed to take place at 11 a.m., but since somebody stole all the food, Kyle laughed, 11 a.m. What? The 11th hour, the last possible moment. Kyle nudged his head up at the Wonder Dome. How much do you want to bet that 11 o'clock on the dot the clue we need most of all will pop up in the 300 section. Sierra smiled. So this new book is a clue about our clue? That's my guess. Did you eat breakfast? Not yet. Well, what are you waiting for? Said Miguel as he strode into the room. Today's the big day. We're going to need our energy for the final sprint. He's right, said Akima, climbing down the spiral staircase. The doors open in less than two hours. Then we only have two more hours to figure everything out. But, said Kyle to his other teammates, Sierra just figured out when we'll get the big 300s clue. He gestured toward the picture book at the last possible minute. What, said Akima, 11.59? Close, 11 o'clock. Awesome, said Miguel. It must be a very good clue. Kyle and his team went into the cafe, where they found Haley Daly seated at a table, eating half a grapefruit, staring blankly through the glass walls into the rotunda. Hey, Haley, said Kyle. How's it going? Not bad. You? Good. Win or lose, we're having a blast. We're the fun bunch, said Akima. You guys really get along, huh? Oh, yes, said Sierra. I haven't had this much fun since I was six. Seriously? What's the matter, Haley? said Akima. Life not so good on Team Charles? It's okay, I guess. I mean, we've pulled together some good clues and all. Well, said Miguel, if you ever want to switch sides, we're always looking for new members. Can I do that, just switch sides? Even though I know everything about what Team Charles did all day yesterday? I think so, said Kyle. I mean... There was nothing in the rules about teams. Huh, said Haley. And Andrews teamed up with you guys too? No, said Kyle. Haley nodded toward the wall of windows behind Kyle. Then why'd he just swipe his library card and go into your meeting room? What is Haley talking about? Share with your fellow listeners. Zipping across the slick marble floor, Kyle and his team, trailed by Haley, practically slid into community meeting room B, where Andrew Peckelman stood with a notepad jotting down everything that was written on the whiteboard walls. Hey! shouted Akima. That's cheating! Andrew spun around. His eyes were the size of tennis balls behind his goggle glasses. Uh, 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 he sputtered. You guys left the door open. No, we did not, said Kyle extremely calmly, especially considering how much he wanted to throttle Peckelman. It locks automatically. I checked. And I double-checked the door before we went to bed, said Miguel. Kyle was surprised to hear it. You did? You bet, bro. It's what teammates do. They knocked knuckles. Well, you don't have anything but a stupid list of stupid books and stupid authors and a stupid Bible verse. A verse which... Boomed Mr. Limoncello, whose face had just appeared on the video screen wall. You would do well to memorize, Mr. Peckerman. Thou shalt not steal. Mr. Limoncello was dressed in a curled white wig and a long black robe. He looked like a judge in England. He 
slammed down a rubber gavel on his desk and made a noise like a whoopee cushion. Will everyone kindly join me in the rotunda reading room? At once, everyone shuffled out of the meeting room and into the rotunda. They were shocked to see that Mr. Limoncello himself was seated behind the librarian's desk at the center of the circular room. There was no hologram. This was the real deal. Charles, all smiles, made a grand entrance, slowly descending one of the spiral staircases. Good morning, everybody, he called out cheerfully. What's all the excitement? Did I miss something? Just your man Andrew trying to cheat, said Miguel. What? Oh, good morning, Mr. Limoncello. I didn't expect to find you here inside the library. Isn't today your birthday, sir? Yes, Charles, and there's no place I'd rather be on my big day than inside a library surrounded by books. Unless, of course, I could be on a bridge to Terabithia. Well, sir, I must say you're certainly looking fit and trim. Have you been working out? No, Charles, today I will be working in. I beg your pardon. Today I will be working here inside the library, supervising the final hours of this competition. Oh, I don't think it will take hours, sir, said Charles. Not to brag, but I suspect some of us will be going home very soon. You are correct. For instance, Mr. Peckerman, he will be leaving right now. What do you think's about to happen? Share with your fellow listener. And now, milliseconds more of Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library. What? whined Peckerman. Why? Because you cheated. You tried to steal the other team's hard-earned information. Peckleman's eyes darted back and forth. It wasn't my fault. It was Charles's idea. He whipped up his arm and waggled his finger. Charles told me to do it. He made me do it. We'll find out what happens to Andrew and Charles as Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library continues. Thank you.